All right, what's up, everybody? This is Alex from X Trades, and welcome back to another weekly trade ideas list. I hope everybody had a wonderful trading week last week. Got some rest this weekend. We did have an extended weekend, so we are coming into a shortened week in the stock market this week. Could be a little bit slow. Shortened weeks are generally lower volume. People go on vacation. We are getting into that summertime trading, and lots of times you will see activity go down just a little bit, and the market can feel a little bit slower. If you tuned in last week, we had an all right list. There was one setup that played out pretty good that was on LUV puts. Had a pretty nice breakdown, fell down about 5% below that 2750 level we were looking for. GE puts we also had on watch. It did not break the neckline, so I wanted to highlight how important it is to wait for that neckline break on a head and shoulders before trying to short. So it ended up holding that neckline as support and it was not able to break down. We also had Under Armour. We were looking at calls on that. They had a pretty choppy week. It did have a pretty good start. I think it ran maybe 2 to 3%, but ended up pulling back and now kind of back into choppy territory. But I did buy September expiration on those to give you lots of time to fart around. So hopefully this week we'll have at least two out of the three play out. Usually in my list of three that I put out, there is more than one that plays out. But sometimes, you know, not all of them are going to play out. So hopefully we'll have a little bit more play out this week. You can see on our X Trades app right here. Right now I do have UAA calls. I have Baidu calls very far out expiration this one four months this one three months and then also I have QCOM puts that I just opened on Friday that's for two months on the July monthlies this UAA position is actually wrong because I do have a 33 average and for some reason that's reflecting down a little bit more than what it should be and then Baidu I'm down 30% currently with three months to go we did have a couple good setups we had Lulu calls 24% we also had an SPX trade here I think I made like 120 bucks on this we had one loss here Realized, lost about 50% on that. Ended up taking some UNG puts as well. Made about 33% in a two-day swing on that. But before we get into our charts, we'll go over the economic calendar real quick. Tuesday here coming into tomorrow. The only thing I would say to pay attention to is consumer confidence at 10. Wednesday, not so important. Just a couple of Fed speakers and the Fed beige book, but Fed beige book never moves the market. Thursday, a little bit more important. You're going to want to pay attention to the GDP. Also pending home sales at 10. And then on Friday, the most important is going to be the PCE. This is the Fed's preferred inflation gauge. And it's very important that we see inflation continuing its downtrend. Hopefully the PCE will come in line, at least like the CPI did, because we had every single reading this year on CPI pretty much be over forecast and a little bit hotter. But our last CPI that just came in, it was in line. So it's 3.4% versus 3.4%. So you want to see PCE come in line or below expectations. And we also have a PMI reading at 945. So PCE is going to be the big one of the week. Second most important is going to be GDP. Third most important, probably consumer confidence. All right, and on to the seasonality. So nothing really too special this week. We have winning trades at 47%. Summarized profit at 0% over the last 20 years. So nothing really special here. You can see it's actually kind of choppy this week. But we did average a pretty good up thrust last week. And this little up thrust you see right here from the 25th up into you know the 26th the 27th this is over the weekend so historically we did have a pretty big push up right here but we did not trade at all this year because we do have a weekend in this period so we're now we're coming into a historically choppy area but the most important thing is going to be this little historic pullback we have in june you see about the 8th or so about june 8th we do start to pull back after that date and it's a little bit more big so maybe it's about that time to start looking at hedges in the market especially on the SPY or QQQ. This is the SPY seasonality chart. So maybe pay attention to a pullback after maybe June 8th around this period, maybe even just at the beginning of June in general, start hedging, start looking for a pullback. And looking at the 10 year data set, we don't have anything special here either. We have winning trades at 40%. Summarized profit at negative 2%. So more recent years for recent market conditions, not really that special for this week coming up. But you can see the week after, we do have a pretty nice up thrust going into late June. So nothing really special here this week, but the week after we do have a nice little up thrust over the last 10 years up into June 8th. And then after June 8th, a little pullback that we average. So the 10 year data set and the 20 year data set both in agreement. We do see a little pullback about maybe after June 8th or so historically. So we'll have to see how that goes. But otherwise, this week, nothing special. We have winning trades at a lower percentage here on the 10-year and a lower percentage of winning trades on the 20-year as well at 47%. All right, and on to our setups. We'll go over the first one here. It's going to be McDonald's. McDonald's has actually been selling off all year, basically, since the new year. Since late January, it's been in a downtrend with occasional pops, but nothing crazy. Really, the 61.8% bounce could have turned into something nice but it ended up breaking that now we are at the next fibonacci level 
at the 78.6 here at 257. So I'm going to look for some type of dip buy here. One thing I do want to see it do though, I want to see it getting over 260s. And that's this is little wick high right here. I want to see it getting over that. If it can get over that, make a base, probably try to go higher there. But otherwise, overall, it does need to hold this 78.6 because there's really no support other than that, or really no potential support other than that, until this 245 area right here. And that 260 level kind of meets directly with this old structure low here as well. So if we can get over that 260, that's a pretty good shot to start heading back up. Probably going to look at 30 days to expiration on this. I'm not sure if I'd really look at a day trade on McDonald's. Sometimes it can move enough to kind of catch a day trade on, but overall it's a, it's a good swing trade stock. You can kind of find some gnarly swings on it, and the premiums are really not too bad. The IV implied volatility is a little bit lower on this. So if you can kind of get a big move, the implied volatility will ramp up pretty nice. You can get paid pretty good, assuming you catch, you know, an implied volatility ramp up on the premium. So your main signal is going to be over 260s. If you can get over 260s, that can take you back up to the next Fibonacci level. You can maybe even mark this one as well, 265s and also 262. So I probably will need to get over those two as well. I could even get rid of the Fibonacci real quick and just show you. If I can get back over 265 overall, that's a lot of free space back up to this structure high right here at this area and this area. So this 265 to 276 is a pretty good area to kind of head back up. If we can get over 262s and 265, pretty nice free space right here. So yeah, if you want to wait for 260 to get clear, that's a pretty smart idea as well. Otherwise, if you're trying to just buy right here, start looking for that 257 area or the 78.6 level to kind of start acting as support because there's really nothing else right here. But another thing we do have, RSI kind of getting back below the 30 area. Last time I was at this area, we did have a short-term bounce. Right now, it's kind of still in a free fall. So maybe waiting for that 260 breakout or the break over 260 is a little bit smarter to do. I mean, you're kind of flushing here. You got a big red bar, kind of almost an inside looking bar. And if it you know, it takes out the low right here. It can't flush further. So it's important that it at least gets over the high of this bar right here. So if they can get over Friday's high, that's a good signal. If they can get over 260, that's a good signal as well. So a little bit riskier dip buying this, but that's why you want to buy time. Get decent expiration because if it wants to keep going, the drawdown won't be too bad if you're buying further out. So yeah, that's really it. 78.6 through last point of support on this Fibonacci level needs to hold that up for a bounce and it could head higher. So MCD looking at calls, be a little bit patient, buy time on expiration, make sure this level is holding. If you want to wait for 260 to get broken over, you could do that as well. Probably a little bit smarter of a move. All right, and on to number two, this is MRNA. So this has been a killer to the upside. And it's a little bit risky to try to short these vertical moves like this, especially if it's like a short squeeze or you got a lot of volume. So for MRNA here, I'm looking at 162s. I want to see 162s get taken out if that flushes, you got a pretty much straight shot down to the 921 EMA combo area, at least back down to the EMAs, maybe back down to 150. And what I did, I right clicked, I added an alert and I named it breakdown right here. So if 162 gets taken out, that's a nice flush level back down to the EMAs, maybe down to 150. You also have a very overbought RSI. So you got RSI basically at 88 up here. I mean, last time I got this overbought was at the 80s right here and had a pretty nice pullback. But like I said, with vertical moves like this, you want to wait for like a structure low to get taken out. And I believe Friday's low of this bar or the 162 is your signal to break and then go lower. Because if it holds over this, I still feel like there's a chance up to, you know, 177 or so, which is the next resistance point. So you want to see that breakdown under 162, and it's that simple. So there's really not too much technicals here. There's no pattern. It's just vertical. You have an overcooked RSI, and you need it to get under the structure low at 162. And that can signal a reversal. Head back down to the EMAs. Because, I mean, look at the price gap between EMA and price. It's very wide, so lots of times the moving averages and the price will catch back up with each other kind of like this see how this one big bar got very overextended and it melted back down to the emas tested it went higher and it does that over and over same thing right here big green bar very extended over the emas came back down to the emas and it just does that over and over so that's kind of another way to look at it. You got price very overextended over the EMAs. You got the RSI overcooked. So just two classic signs of 
an overbought condition. But like I said, that 162 does need to break down and you can start looking at puts. If you really wanted to try to time this top and not wait for the 162 break, I really would go like 30 plus days to expiration because if you get caught up here and it's still holding 162s, it can keep melting head back up to 177s. So that 162 can be your signal lower. So that's for MRNA, looking at puts. Choose that 162 as a signal if needed. All right, number three, we're looking at CVNA or Carvana. It's a pretty simple gap fill trade. There's really no crazy technicals behind this. You got RSI already overbought back here in this period. Now it started to cool off. So RSI is not overbought. We do need it to get under this 21 EMA. So this is a 9, 21 EMA cloud. Obviously your first line, your nine. Second one, 21. It needs to get under that 21. It closed under that 21. I believe it can fill at least 50% of the gap before trying to, you know, at least try to have a quick bounce. Because with gaps this big, you really won't see that straight flush all the time, especially, you know, one session. You're going to see it very gradually fill back down, kind of have bounces and potential reversals in the middle of it. And usually that 25 to 50 percentile uh, of the gap is usually a pretty good area to go off of especially for a gap this big. I mean, this is almost a 30% wide gap, so. But you do have two closes inside of the gap. You have one from Thursday, one from Friday. But like I said, you still are holding the 921 EMA combo or the cloud. So you need to break under that completely. Your price pull into it back here, held it up pretty good. You had a short-term hold up here. And then once you lost it right here, we did get it flush. So you want to see something like that. Maybe even the nine cross back down the 21 as well. But if we can just get it close under the 21, that would be good. That can set you up for day trades and stuff. Quick flushes down, you can profit and then get out. But if you're trying to hold this overnight and look for a swing trade that can fill most of this, I really would buy further out expiration. But like I said, your signal is going to be under the 21 EMA. It's that simple. There's really no crazy technicals on this. There's no pattern, nothing like that. Just a really big gap that needs to get under your EMAs right here. And I could fill a pretty good amount of it, maybe up to the 50% point, probably about to $100 a share or so. So that's for Carvana looking at puts. Short-term day trades, I really would only take if you're going to get that close under the 21 EMA. For swing trades, if you wanted to try this despite still being over the 21 EMA, I really would buy a lot of time. If it does close under the 21 EMA and you want to swing trade this and fill most of the gap, I really would still buy a lot of time on expiration, you know, at least 30 to 60 days. Give it time to fart around because it's not just going to fill straight down all the time, unfortunately. I wish price worked like that, but it doesn't. So just be patient. Wait for that signal. Same thing with MRNA. You're waiting for that break under 162. Carvana, you're waiting for that break under the 21 EMA on the one day. Call it like 107, 106 or so. Something like that that could confirm you lower here. Start filling the rest of the gap. All right, and on to the indexes. So last week on SPY, our close was right here on Friday. We really didn't have a setup here. There was nothing crazy. The only thing I could do was just put my max projection high up to 532s, 1.272 extension. And look where it rejected on Thursday, exactly at that point. So this 532.97 or the 533s was the max projection point. Rejected right off of that first thing Thursday morning and filled all the way back down to the back test level. So it's crazy how accurate it worked. And then, I mean, we pulled into the back test here on Thursday and it bounced again on Friday. So you're coming into this week with the same levels, your 533 to 524.61. And that's your trading range. Same thing. That's going to be your trading range until further notice. In order for the market to get bearish, you're going to have to start closing back under the 524s. Probably going to have to start getting under the EMAs and stuff like that. Because if you want to try shorting into the EMAs, you're going to get caught like this. If you try shorting this big bar, you got caught and it bounced the day after. Same thing back here. If you try shorting into these EMAs, I mean, you just got caught. So it's wise to wait for something like this. Like you get a close under the 921. You got the cloud flipping red. Uh, your 921 is trending lower, etc. That's the kind of thing you want to see for shorting the market. I mean, you can short at resistance as well, such as you see here on Thursday. You could have short, you know, right at the max projection point at the 1.272. If you didn't know, the 1.272 just comes from this high to this low. I could even get rid of it and show you again real quick. So you start from this high, click here at this low, and that gives you the 1.272 extension. That's how we got that price target. And that's exactly why I could only project up to there. I couldn't expect any higher because you just really don't know. Once the breakout target is reached from this 
breakout right here. You have to get a close over it to get to the next Fibonacci extension. And right now, we really have no price targets other than extensions because we're at all time highs. But you do have a new established resistance for sure at 533. And you got your support at the back test of 524s. I did mention last week as well, I wanted to see a dip into the 524s. And I mentioned that could be a good dip buy area. First thing bounced on Friday. I didn't catch this. One of our analysts did recommend me start looking at longs here. And I figured I would just, you know, start looking for dip buys the day after, but gapped up a little too high. So he was right on that one for sure. We bounced right out the 524s. I should have probably added right here, like I was saying last week. You also had a pull into the 921 EMA combo or the 9 EMA, 9 EMA cloud, whatever you want to call it. Bounce the day after. So SPY is still in an uptrend. If you want to try to bet against this 921 combo, be my guest. It's a little bit riskier. If you want to wait for it to flush under 524s before shorting, that's probably smart. Could also wait for it to get back up to the 533s. Try to short there or at least a scalp, something like that. Short-term scalp. But I really wouldn't try a shorting, you know, directly at the back test. Only wait for resistance or wait for a flush under. And for dip buys, I really would wait for it to get back to the back test area, something like that, you know, at the 524s. Same thing I said last week. That's probably my ideal dip buy area, just the 524s or, you know, 525, whatever you want to call it. The back test area is probably my favorite place. Or if it pulls into the 921 combo. For right now, though, since we did close like this, this is a inside bar. So this is the mother bar. This is the main bar. And then this is your inside bar right here so that's the current setup right now this is your inside bar either it's going to need to get over 530 or under 526 so that's kind of a simple trick you could use for inside bars if you want to wait for a breakout or wait for a setup on an inside bar you could literally mark the high of the inside bar mark the low of the inside bar and you can right click hit add alert and you can literally add alerts at the high and then right click the low as well hit add alert and you could you know mark the low as well wait for a breakout wait for price to get either under or over and that can give you a setup either up or down so with inside bars they're kind of bilateral but right now like i said we're still in the uptrend holding 921 combo i don't really see a reason for the market to pull back just yet definitely keep in mind we're a little overbought like i said wait for a short maybe to get back up to 533s if it gets back up there that's a good area to look for puts look for dip buys back down at the 524s stuff like that get good discount areas get good areas to add so that's really all i got for you guys spy is still bullish it held up the back test max upside 533 same as last week just definitely mark this mark this exact fibonacci from this high to this low and with a 1.272 extension and that will give you your, your levels you don't have to draw anything all right and on to qqq so last week we were focused on this back test here so this was the back test last friday and it held this up so this is your back test level at the 449.30s probably just rounded up to 450 once it back tested 450 that sets you up for a pretty nice pop on Monday, a little pop on Tuesday, and we ran all the way up to the 1.272, same thing as SPY. Once you got that confirmed breakout, your 1.272 is your first target. So that's this measurement from high down to low. That gives you the 1.272, like I explained last week. So that was the max projection. We reached that. We rejected off of it very aggressively on Thursday, just like SPY. So we flushed under it, kind of came back up. Once we back tested it right here, later in the afternoon, I set up for a really big flush. VIX went crazy and ramped up. Price also went down very aggressively. So that's pretty much your level two reject or breakover right now. I really wouldn't want a long right at 459 it's just because of how strong the area is. I actually like puts here better to be honest, especially at this 459 area, the 1.272, same with SPY. Once it gets back up to 433, is it like a short there as well? At least until, you know, it starts closing back over the 459s. If it starts closing over the 459s or the 460s, that's a pretty good signal to go higher. But otherwise, this can act as res for sure. And for dip buys, I really don't like it unless it, you know, comes back down to the back test area at the 449.30s or the 450. Same thing as this, or the same thing as this back test right here. I like a dip buy there. I like a dip buy at the 921 EMAs. So if it comes back down there, you can look for a dip buy as well. Otherwise right here, I don't like anything. It's very close to resistance. There's really no confirmation of a rejection bar or anything yet. So definitely just watch the 459s. I would look for a rejection potentially. Start looking for signals there. We will need a VIX ramp up. As you saw, I mean, we pulled into the 459 here on Friday and it was just a very dinky kind of wimpy pullback. There's nothing of substance here because the VIX didn't go up aggressively. Also coming into an extended weekend, there's really no reason for the market to pick up huge activity and sell off aggressive. So definitely watch that 459.21 and also mark this Thursday low 
at a 451.85. So you're low at 451.85 and you're 459.21. That's my day trade levels right now. So I might look for scalps at the 459s for puts as well. And for dip buys, I like it back down at the you know 451.85 if it comes back down there. That will require a very aggressive move though. So those are my short-term levels for right now. That's what I like on the QQQ for right now, just Thursday's low and also the 1.272 extension. And then like I said, your back test area as well. That's probably the most major area. If it pulls back into that, I like a dip by there as well. All right, and on to the VIX for our last piece of analysis. So last week we were focused on 1237 and 1182 and rightfully so, I'll show you why. This 1182 from December 2023 was so important this week, or at least last week. So I pulled into 1182 right here, held up, really ramped up off of this. Once it got over 1237 as well, right here, it definitely picked up more, more selling on the indexes and just aggressive selling overall across the board. You can see here at 940 as well, uh, Thursday, it pulled up into 1237, actually rejected off of that. It went back down to 1180s. So it's respecting these areas very well. Pretty much any one day level we mark on this chart, price definitely respects it at some point. Here's VIX pulling into 1182 right here and holding that up as well pulling into it right here, gapping up the next day. So, I mean, 1182 has just been very strong and this is all the way from December, 2023. So it's the same level as going into this week. I don't know why VIX says it closed at 1237. That's not right. It closed at 1192. So just keep the same levels right now. Overall, if you want to get bearish on the market, like a real bearish signal, you want VIX getting over at 1367, like I've been saying the past couple of weeks. And I've showed you why in the past, why 1367 is so important. Once it got over right here, it runs back up into 15s. Once it got over right here, it ran back up into 15, 16, 17, ramped up over right here, ran into 15s. Same thing right here. So the 1367 is just a very big level. It needs to get over that overall you could even look at the moving averages as well so it rejected the 921 cloud right here also rejected it last week right here it rejected it up here so you do need vix getting over that as well and i feel like if it gets over the 921 combo or the 921 cloud that will clear 1367 as well so if it gets over that it's going to get over the cloud as well and you can also see the 200 SMA acting as a pretty good level too. You got a rejection, rejection. You got price trying to get over right here. Once price got over right here, it definitely picked up. So the 200 SMA and also the 921 EMAs work pretty good for the VIX, especially for looking for a trend and volatility. So you can use those. You can use my levels, use whatever you got to do, and then look at it on the short term time frame. If you see it holding and ramping off a major level like this, you could have a pretty good setup for shorts. If you start seeing it kind of get back down aggressive under like a major level, like 1237, like this, you could have a pretty good long on your hands and you probably see the market go higher. Same thing right here. If you see it rejecting like a big level like this, this is probably a pretty good scalp for longs the VIX is falling aggressively and overall you can just use them so if you're looking for like a major reaction to a one-day level it makes a very good day trade signal depending what you're looking for usually you want to see VIX ramping up for shorts or for puts and you want to see VIX ramping down for calls etc so just keep that 1182 on watch also 1237 overall like I said you do want it getting over 1367 that move over 1367 is a real volatility signal you probably see a more of a big broad market sell-off if you see it getting over that you can see it got up to the 1340s here on thursday it got up to 1337 but it did not get over the 1367 you could probably even mark 14 even as well if you just wanted to round up 1367 to 14 you wait for vix to get over 14 as well for a pretty good signal to short the market but yeah no big volatility signal yet you did get a short-term one off the lows directly at the 1182 that we have marked, pulled up into the 921 EMA, rejected off of that. So like I said, we'll need to get over that 921 cloud, get over 1367, et cetera. Otherwise you can just keep seeing VIX trending lower like this. And same thing right here, you got it trending under the cloud right here as well. So yeah, pretty important to get over that 1367 eventually. Otherwise volatility is probably gonna stay pretty low and you will see these pops off the lows kind of stay short-lived. But that's all I got for you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to our X-Trades YouTube channel. 
I'm going to get this chopped up, sent out. It's already pretty late, so I need to get it out at a decent time. I love you guys. And I'm out. There's a reason why Xtrades is currently the fastest growing application on the market for sharing financial ideas. With over $2.5 million paid in the last two years to contributors, users are flocking to see what trades the top traders on the leaderboard are sharing in real time. If you're looking to grow your reputation as a trader on the internet or discuss your trading ideas with other reputable investors, click the link below and get connected with the trading mentor today, completely free of charge.